Merci. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you all for taking the time to attend this presentation of the financial year 2021-2022 numbers. I will leave uh, the floor to our group CFO, Mr. Pierre Condolier, for the presentation, and I will be happy to answer your questions after the presentations. Pierre, to you. Thank you, Abderman. Well, uh, what we can say after this year is that uh, the group has a changed dimension uh, with new metrics, I would say. Uh, we have new historic results. Uh, this is the highest EBITDA in the highest net income in group history. Uh, also, we have been able to, to integrate uh, rapidly uh, the Acorn acquisition, which took place on December 17th. We will come back later to that. Uh, we have also been able to perform well during various economic cycles, in particular in the recycling business, where we had uh, very good months uh, during the spring, but more difficult months at the end of the year. And uh, multi-service again demonstrated its very dynamic uh, commercial trend in all businesses, and we are very happy about that. If we go into the figures, um, the revenue turnover is 5.3 billion euro, which is 45.9% higher than last year. Um, the EBDA is 510 million euro, which make an EBDA to sales ratio amounting to 9.7%. Um, roughly the increase in EBDA, EBIT, current EBIT or net income is between 30 and 36%. And the net income attributable to group shareholders is 237.6 million euros. Uh, the EBITDA pro forma, had we consolidated uh, a core over 12 months, is 535 million euros. Well, uh, we had some, uh, of course, volume increase uh, driven by the ECOR acquisition, both in ferrous scrap and non ferrous metals. We will come back later uh, uh, into more details. Our unit margin in the recycling business have reached uh, record levels uh, at, in some months, not over all the year, uh, but uh, in average, we have a record, uh, higher margin uh, compared to prior year, both for ferrous uh, metals and non-ferrous metal. Uh, we have also some um, increase in OPEX, as you can Im imagine, in energy mainly, but also to a lesser extent in maintenance and labor cost. Uh, you know that uh, associated with the um, ECO acquisition, we have some remedies. We have taken some commitments in, towards the Euro European Commission. We have signed in the month of June uh, uh, eight contracts with the uh, Riva Group in order to sell to them the, the sites that we have to dispose. Um, Riva was uh, uh, agreed by the European Commission in November as uh, the buyer of these yards. They meet the criteria and the closing will take place on January 1st. Uh, in environmental service, uh, services to municipalities, it has uh, remained a recurring stream of revenue and also profitability for the group, even if slightly uh, lower compared to prior year, uh, mainly due to uh, an effect which we will come back later on. In the multi-service, uh, the growth is 7.9% uh, uh, for the revenue. And the EBIT is stable uh, with offsetting trends. We have a, a strong improvement in aeronautics, which comes pro progressively back to pre-COVID levels. And we have a decrease in cleaning, uh, mainly because last year we had plenty of additional works on ancillary COVID services, which we have uh, less this year, in particular in H2. And also there is an inflation issue which we managed to pass on to customer, but uh, either through prices increase or productivity or decrease in uh, overheads, but with a time lag effect. We will start with uh, environmental services, which has a revenue of 4.3 billion euros, 
which is 58% uh, compared to prior year. EBITDA is uh, 471 million euro, 39.2%, which makes an EBITDA ratio of 10.9%, which is very high, not as high as last year because uh, uh, the average price of our commodities was significantly higher than last year. You will see after afterwards. Uh, the current EBIT is uh, 342 million euros, which is 41% or 100 million higher than last year. Uh, we have uh, some rest restructuring expense uh, after the ECO acquisition, amounting to 3.5 million euros. And we have a technical effect as we have changed the method of consolidation for two subsidiaries. So the EBIT is uh, 340 million euros which is 40% higher than last year. Uh, we have a 25% increase in volume in ferro scrap, uh, mainly due to uh, eco uh, contrib um, impact, uh, because at a constant scope, the volume is decreasing, uh, 12 to 13%. We have 30% more volumes in non ferrous metal, which would be roughly stable at constant scope. Uh, you remember that we, when we talked in H1, the decrease in volume had already started. It was due at that time due to a lack of incoming scrap from the automotive sector. However, the H2, the lower volume compared to, to prior year, has a different explanation. It's more due to the, our customers, uh, which have themselves uh, less sales. And uh, in a context of uh, uh, more difficult uh, economic anticipation and in a context of higher um, energy prices. Uh, we have had over the year a very good performance of our aluminium uh, activity, heavy media plants and aluminium refineries, and more generally uh, of all our niche business. I would like to put stress on that uh, on the aluminium um, segment, we have a more, I would say, a kind of uh, mining uh, business model uh, because sometimes we purchase as uh, uh, as ferro scrap and we have all the added value which contributes to our revenue. Uh, the trend that we have uh, started to observe last year towards a, a shift uh, of demand to our, towards more uh, recycled material uh, is still continuing. You will see that uh, if you are familiar with the sector, that there are several projects of new uh, electric arc furnace or other plants which can consume ferro scrap, um, which is another important issue. We have secured the renewal of our um, D3E uh, uh, treatment contracts, uh, our main contracts, which was secured during uh, this year. In service to municipalities, we have revenue which increased uh, 7%, 7% and still best in class uh, performance, even if a little lower compared to prior year. And the good news, we have secured the, uh, indeed, uh, I would say that our portfolio uh, in the service to municipalities is very young. Uh, we are at the beginning of all our main contracts and we have very good visibility uh, on uh, revenue and profitability on this contract. So, um, as I said before, um, we would like to explain a little more in detail the 25% increase in volume in ferro scrap. Roughly, we had last year 4 million uh, tons. Uh, as I said before, we have 12 to 13% uh, decreasing uh, effect of our, our underlying volumes which is roughly 500,000 tons. Uh, the full year effect of ECO would have been 2.2 million euro, but we have not uh, consolidated it for the full year, so we miss 500,000 tons. The ECO underlying volume has also reduced because uh, they are in the same sector than we are. Um, so they have a 200,000 tons uh, reduction, which explains roughly 500 million, 5 million tons in ferrous metals. Uh, the decrease in the underlying volume, we don't have that for the non ferrous metals.
Well, uh, we have a fairly uh, complicated complicated breach to explain. Uh, last year, we had uh, 330 million euro EBITDA in our uh, environmental service uh, business. Um, we have some uh, same scope effect, I would say, and we have also some effects which are due to uh, ECOR contribution. Of course, uh, the effects uh, linked to ECOR, they are bigger because this is not a variance, it's a contribution. Um, so uh, we have a, a good contribution from our Spanish activities, roughly 40 million EBITDA, but this is lower compared to prior year, 8 million. Uh, other uh, countries where Dorishbourg were was historically active, which are USA, uh, Belgium, Germany, Mexico, Italy, the EBITDA increases by 5 million euro. In France, on our uh, Legacy scope, the EBDA increases by 26 million euros. Uh, the eco countries outside of France, they contribute to 14 million euros. France uh, eco 101 million euros. We have a light small decrease in household waste collection by 4 million euros, mainly because um, on, on our Paris contract, we have some volume um, revision uh, formulas. And uh, unfortunately, the volume which was taken into account this year, it was the year of 2020. And uh, you remember that there was a lockdown and uh, in the center of Paris, there was uh, not many waste that year. And uh, we were impacted by that and also by the increase in energy cost. If we uh, go, if we move to the multi-service, we have a revenue Indeed, the revenue of the multi-service itself, it's 962 million euros, uh, but the, contri the, the contribution or the impact for the group of the multi-service revenue is 941 million euros because there are some intercompany sales which, were, which are eliminated. Uh, this is an increase by 7.9%. EBITDA, EBIT, current EBIT, they, I would say, are nearly the same compared to prior year. Uh, we will see in the detail uh, of uh, the various segments uh, the explanation. So you, you see that there is a continuous trend of growth uh, in revenue and uh, that we stay at very high level of uh, EBITDA. Uh, in the tertiary solutions, there is an increase by 4.4% uh, in revenue, cleaning France plus 3%. Uh, which is a very good performance because we miss uh, 20 by 30 million euro of additional services compared to prior year, which we did not have. And nevertheless, we were able to increase our revenue as this uh, additional service, they were linked to COVID. And this is the good news that we have less service. This means that the sanitary situation was much better, but uh, we have not, we have no less additional services. Um, Spain and Portugal, they are roughly stable. Um, we have also some strong development in other uh, tertiary uh, segment solutions. Facility management plus 15%, electricity and HVAC plus 15%. Uh, and there is a slight decrease in the EBITDA in the service solution, which is mainly linked to um, uh, COVID the fact that we have less COVID uh, works, extra works, and also the time lag effect to pass on inflation to customer. Industry solution, which is mainly uh, outsourcing of services in the aeronautics, we have an increase by 39% in revenue, uh, thanks to the increase in assembly rates at Airbus. Uh, I would say that the strategy that the subsidiary uh, put in place in uh, 2020, which consisted in not uh, making any redundancy plan, but uh, trying to, to go through the very difficult six months that we had uh, with uh, partial unemployment and also uh, reducing uh, cost was very successful because uh, the trend is recovering very well and now we are missing some employees. And if we had a uh, redundancy plan at this year, uh, we would be in a, in a much more difficult situation. So they had a very sound strategic vision 
um, and uh, which we see already this year and uh, which we should, should see even more next year. The EBDA improves by uh, 37 million uh, euro, which is 75% uh, due to the volume effect. In the temporary staff business, there is an increase by 12% in revenue, which is a mix of uh, recovery in aeronautical uh, temporary work in H2, opening of new agencies and a small external growth at the end of the year. And the EBITDA increased by 1.3 million euro, which is 47%. Uh, urban maintenance, I would say that the comparison compared to prior year is a bit more difficult because we have sold the largest subsidiary at the end of May. So we have a decrease by 10%, but uh, last year I think the decrease may be higher because we have made this decrease uh, at the end of the year. Um, and also we have an impact uh, on the EBITDA because last year, as there was, a, I would say, kind of non-recurring positive uh, 4 million contribution, 4 million impact uh, of this um, branch uh, because they had some particularities in the contract, which was a bit strange. The, less, the lesser they worked, the more they, were, they earned money. Of course, the customer was not happy with that. And we, are, we sold the subsidiary to the, to the largest customer of the division. And we have more financial um, uh, holding uh, cost, I would say, uh, in the EBDA. You have the explanation uh, about the chart. I would say that most of the increase is non recurring. Uh, what is recurring is that uh, we had last year uh, a gain on disposal of a land, 3 million. Uh, definitely, we will not have gained that gain this year, but most of the other impacts they are, are non recurring. We have uh, some extra advertising uh, cost amounting to nearly 3 million uh, in the context of uh, advertising campaign. And we have additional IT cost uh, amounting to 2 million in the uh, context of a specific project, will we which will continue uh, a few years, but not, uh, not many. And we have also some uh, non recurring costs uh, below EBITDA in that division, uh, which were linked to the ECO acquisition mainly. Uh, we have the, I would say, the strongest balance sheet ever with uh, equity amounting uh, nearly to 1 billion euro, uh, 924 million, net debt uh, 653 million euro, gearing is 0 0.71, and uh, leverage ratio is, uh, pro forma is uh, 1.22. Um, uh, the bridge of the net debt is uh, complicated this year. Uh, of course, we have the EBITDA amounting to 510 million euro. We, we have two big external growth uh, operations, ECO and uh, the stake in Elior. You have the amount uh, on the slide. Uh, we have net capex, uh, gross capex is higher. It's 211 million euro. But net capex is uh, lower, is 193 million euro, because we have also some uh, asset disposal and uh, we have also refinancing of uh, prior year capex. Uh, you see that we, uh, finance cost is 22 million euro, uh, likely to increase a bit next year due to uh, rates increase. We have paid some income tax uh, as we are profitable. We were successful in uh, managing our working capital requirements, which is uh, fairly stable uh, over the year. And uh, we uh, paid a dividend last year. There are also some other effects, but they are uh, much smaller. So we invested uh, 211 million euro in uh, the business which is a 42% ratio compared to EBITDA, which is uh, below our 50% uh, guide, multi-year guidance, which uh, we were also below last year. I think uh, one year will come, uh, I don't know when, but we'll, we maybe want for one year 
higher than the 50%. Um, we invested, I would say, if we want to describe some uh, capex this year, uh, we built a new post trading line uh, uh, in the center of France. Uh, this is roughly nine to ten million. Uh, we we indeed we invested into several WIS uh, processing line. We started to to build a new uh, shredder. Uh, we in order to replace another one. We invested in several shares during the year. We replaced some cranes, some trucks. We purchased also several lands so, uh, for 10, 11 million euros, some of them in Spain. Uh, we started to, to finish, uh, we finished our um, updating program of CapEx in Spain. We have opened in a new furnace for the lead, uh, which started in the summer. Uh, total CapEx in Spain is uh, 30 million euros this year. And we have also purchased new trucks in the context of uh, signing of new contracts for the um, service to municipalities for 15 million euros. Uh, a few words of capex, I would say that most of them are, are flexible. Uh, if one year we have lower capex, of, of course we have a time lag effect because uh, all the capex we have committed, we have to, uh, uh, to finish them. But we are able, if we want, at what one time, if we need it, to to stop uh, committing to new capex because our uh, I would say that uh, our assets are uh, uh, mostly st state of the art. I will go rapidly on the final of this on this slide uh, just to say that we have a very good liquidity uh, headroom over 500 million euros. Um, which is, I would say, adequate or good, that we have good visibility on uh, our financing lines. And uh, this slide is very conservative because uh, uh, our factoring program uh, will be extended by one year in the coming days. It's not taken into account. Our other drafts, uh, they have never been uh, uh, cancelled by our banks and uh, we have not taken them into account. So I would say that uh, until 2026, we have no major uh, uh, new fi finance to, to put in place, except for renewing, uh, renewing our factoring uh, contracts. Uh, minority stake purchase in EO. Uh, on uh, the 19th of uh, May, we, we announced that uh, we have agreed with the uh, Mr. Zola and Mr. Cojan to, to, to buy the, the share they have in Elio uh, through Beam from, from Mr. Zola uh, for a basic price of 5 euro 65 per share plus a possible amount which is described on the slide. Uh, we have also purchased uh, stock, uh, stock on the market, uh, which is uh, as of today we have a 24.36% uh, uh, in Elio with an average price of 4.52. Uh, Dorisbourg has two seats out of 10 at uh, a year group uh, board. Um, this is a long-term strategic investment. Uh, we have started to consolidate it with the uh, equity, met equity method uh, as of uh, from uh, July 1st on. Um, this has a 4 million negative impact on the net income of the group. Uh, you know that there, there were some uh, press remarks uh, a few weeks ago, a few days ago, uh, about the strategic review, which is the currently placed uh, at EIO. Uh, contribution of the multi-service division from the Richbourg to EIO is one of the options among others. Uh, EIO group uh, should conduct and conclude its strategic review in the coming weeks. Uh, some of we will not say more than that uh, this evening about uh, Elior uh, because the strategic review it is uh, carried out by Elior and uh, we will not say more about that uh, today. So you uh, you have the slides and you have a few more, a few uh, metrics about uh, Elior. Uh, which I will not go uh, in, into details, uh, just to say that it's, um, your revenue is a 4.5 billion euro, but you have the more information on the LEO website. 
So the outlook for the medium and long term, uh, we are 100% confident in the fundamentals uh, of the recycling uh, industry in our in our business model. Also, uh, the advantage in terms of uh, lower greenhouse gas emissions and uh, lower energy consumption from uh, metals and steel, which are produced through the secondary routes, uh, which is uh, with the recycling routes. And now everybody, uh, it's clear for everybody, which was not the case uh, a few years ago. Uh, the politics, they want uh, the, that there is more recycling, uh, that, there is, that, that there are less blast furnace in the coming years, because you know that the blast furnace, they are responsible roughly for 4 to 5 percent of the worldwide uh, greenhouse gas emissions. If you are interested in the sector, and I know that you are, you have seen that uh, over the last 24 months, there are several projects uh, which were announced for new um, plants, either electric arc furnace or some uh, direct reducing, uh, iron reducing plants, which can also consume uh, scrap, which were announced, which will be implemented in the five to 10, 10 years. Uh, if we addition the total volumes uh, uh, of scrap needed by these plants, uh, it's exceed by far uh, what we produce. Uh, so so uh, definitely uh, ferrous scrap and also uh, ferrous non-ferrous non metal, they will be very uh, searched and demanded in the coming years. And also uh, the quality materials, the quality standards of the materials which are, uh, uh, are higher the customer, they are more, uh, uh, more st strict uh, requirements, and we are a very good in a very good position to meet these requirements because we are uh, we, we are committed to invest in the business with new sorting lines. We have uh, invested this year several new sorting lines. X-ray or uh, Abderrahman El Ophir will tell more can tell more uh, about the techniques that. Um, Definitely, we are uh, want to invest more, in particular in non-ferrous metals, because you have also uh, seen that the steel makers they want to come into our uh, scrap business because they want to uh, uh, capture a part of the margin or also better uh, monitor the, the the collection of scrap. Uh, so. We will stay, of course, into that, but maybe we may have more competition from them in the, in the coming years. And uh, but we have a 60 year, 60 year of experience, nearly 70 into that, and you cannot learn that business from uh, uh, in a few months, I would say. Uh, this is for the medium term. Um, in the short term, there are some uh, turbulences, which uh, I would say, which are driven by uh, Ukraine's uh, war consequences, high energy prices, high inflation rates, and also the fear of, of uh, recessions in several significant economies, uh, which in impact a bit uh, our volumes. But uh, we are confident that uh, uh, after the winter, if the fear of uh, lack of electricity uh, disappear, uh, which leads in a a drop in prices, or if the anticipation for economic growth, they come back to a little more positive trend, I would say, the volumes uh, should recover. Uh, we did not, did not expect that, but the, the prices in Turkey uh, in the coming days, they are increasing, which is, I would say, always a good news. This is for the environmental service and for the multi-service, um, the growth should continue. Uh, multi-service on its own scope uh, should be close to 1 billion euro revenue uh, by the end of the year. Uh, the EBITDA also should increase, uh, provided that we continue to uh, to pass on the inflation to customer, uh, which is demanding because uh, either customer or either productivity or a reduction in overheads because uh, there will be likely other uh, salary increase next year. Uh, calendar, uh, so uh, we disclose our um, results this year. We will publish our universal registration document in the coming days. Um, we will have our um, shareholder meetings uh, January 31st. 
and the half year results uh, for next year on May 24th. Adherman, would you add a few words or? No, we can we go directly to the questions. OK, so we have uh, some. The first question is, uh, is there a difference in margin uh, between Lirsa in Spain and the recycling in France? OK, oh, I definitely, I mean, the, the Spanish market is more fragmented and it is more competitive. Uh, definitely the margins in the rest of Europe are higher than in Spain. However, since the acquisition of the Lirsa business, we have improved the, you know, locally the margins and also our profitability. I mean, compared to uh, the era where uh, the family Lajo and Rodriguez was the owner of the business. Even if uh, the, this year, I mean, the, the results are lower, the, it is due mainly to maintenance and energy costs more than uh, to the margin. Uh, we have several questions about the organic effect and the echo effect in our uh, figures. Um, indeed, it's not uh, an easy uh, uh, question to answer because we have uh, been so, I would say, so successful to integrate uh, echo into our operations uh, that uh, it's not always easy to, to segregate uh, the impact. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I think that uh, we have one slide where we have tried to explain that, uh, which is the slide uh, number nine, uh, <clears throat> where we say that we have uh, more or less 12 to 13 percent of the ferrous crop negative uh, impact on our underlying volumes. Then we have the core contribution which uh, we have estimated to uh, 1.7 million, uh, I would say, uh, tons uh, for the 9.5 months where we have consolidated echo, but the echo uh, underlying volume also suffered from this 12 to 13 percent decrease uh, in the volumes, which is linked to the market. We have not uh, lost some customers, not some, some, uh, some suppliers, but the market uh, was not as good uh, uh, compared to prior year. Uh, but from the beginning of the year on, in terms of volumes, I would say uh, I would add uh, the uh, Pierre that the market's conditions were were a little bit tough. I mean, we have a high inflation rates, we have the recession, we have the war in Ukraine, we have the energy costs. All these uh, uh, drivers, I mean, have impacted. I mean, you know, the collection of scrap. Uh, uh, we have some questions about uh, the organic uh, EBITDA uh, and the ECO EBITDA. Uh, we cannot on answer that type of question because uh, now it's it's so uh, implicated and so mixed in our operations. Uh, you please look at the EBITDA of the recycling division uh, uh, at the at a wall. And it, indeed, uh, ECO it's uh, consolidated over nine point five point months. So I would say that the uh, the ratio at the end of the year. It's, uh, it's uh, a mix of uh, the Richbourg and Ecor, but I would say uh, the Richbourg was a bit higher uh, because we, we have more uh, added value uh, into our niche business. Uh, but Ecor performed also very well this year because uh, our estimate, uh, but it, it has to be uh, taken with, uh, to be cautious because it's it not easy to, to estimate, but is that they brought 115 million euro EBITDA. And this uh, is the best EBITDA ever for ECOR, I mean, if the number is uh, correct. We have a question about uh, the forecast for 23. Uh, if we confirm that there is a decrease in volumes and a negative price effect in 23 for ferrous crop and non ferrous metals. I would say that uh, it is what happens uh, in the first weeks of the, of the financial years. As you know, uh, our, our business is difficult to, 
to make uh, to make forecast over one or two months because uh, condition can change rapidly. What we can say is that it is uh, likely that it continue continue to be the case uh, in December uh, because December is always a quiet month because uh, the steel mills are often close two weeks for Christmas and it will be the case this year. Uh, for January and uh, Abderrahman, I, I, I leave you the floor for more uh, uh, long, long term, I would say, or, or it's not long term, but uh, for more uh, forecast over 23 January and after that, but it's difficult to make forecast. No, I, I would say that the market's conditions uh, currently are a little bit difficult. Uh, I mean, the demand of steel is, is very low. Um, however, I mean, in terms of we we have already the results of the the first two months, and uh, they are good. I mean, they are still good. We are still making money. That there's no problem. Okay. Um, well, um, but we don't know, I mean, the evolution of the war, I mean, you know, the inflation rates, the energy uh, costs also, there are lots of uncertainties and it's very difficult to make forecasts and prediction, I mean, predict what would be our EBDA, our results uh, next year. Um, but again, we are very confident for the long term, but in the meanwhile, there are sort of some turbulences. Uh, and so far, we, we we are good. I mean, we are fine with it because I mean, we can uh, we can generate uh, cash, we can generate EBITDA. It's not a problem. I don't know if the con market condition will be uh, tougher in in the beginning of the year or, or softer. I I don't know. Uh, there is a question about the impact of the rise in energy cost uh, on our EBITDA, and uh, and if we have if we are covered for 2023. Yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, um, in the group, uh, the majority of our uh, power costs uh, was edged. I mean, since last year. So, I mean, I would say. The, for the majority, there was no impact or, or a slight impact, but we had an impact on the gas, on the gas, on the diesel, and uh, you know all the, the what you use for you know trucks, uh, cranes, uh, and so. And that was um, roughly speaking 35% increase. Okay. So what I would say that uh, you know we have generated a lot more margin with the acquisition of a car. Uh, but part of this margin was uh, offset by a high energy cost, by a high maintenance cost, because you know the raw material increased significantly. So, for example, for our shredders, the hammers, the caps, and uh, you know all the spare parts that we buy increased at least 30%. So we had a higher cost base uh, that offsets part of the margin, additional margin that we have generated this year. And about the question for 2023, uh, there will be, uh, of course, an impact in uh, electricity prices yeah. uh, increase. Yeah. Definitely, I think that the, the uh, we will the, the costs will be more than double. However, you know, if we divide it, I mean, you know, the ratio per ton, it's not something that we can't pass on to our suppliers. Um, we have, I mean. We believe that it will be more difficult for you know our customers, you know the steel makers, because for them it's uh, it will be you know a very very high cost. So, to to be honest with you, I don't know the outcome for our customers, but for us, I mean it's not something that we couldn't that we wouldn't be able to pass on to our uh, suppliers. Um, there is a question about the impact of the remedies uh, that we have to, to make due to European Commission, impact on revenue, EBITDA and debt. Um, I would say that this is a confidential information for the time being. Uh, we have some uh, confidentiality provision in the agreement uh, which we have signed. Um, I would say what I can say is that is a, a small, very small percentage of the recycling division EBITDA for, for, for this year. And we have a 
question about uh, the hedging of our debt. I will take it this one. Uh, which percentage of debt is related to floating interest rates? Um, we can go to slide number 17. So our green, green bond in, is a uh, fixed uh, in interest rates. Uh, if we looked at our main um, finance or so, uh, 17, yes. Uh, if you look at the uh, left pillar, the green bond in green, it's fixed. Um, our term loan, it's 50% uh, hedged until uh, March 24. Uh, RCF the same, uh, the loan from the European Bank is a fixed rate, factoring its uh, variable rate, this one is exposed and it's not hedged. Uh, bilateral term loans are fixed rates, uh, financial lease is fixed rates, right of use is accounting and overdraft we do not draw on them. So I would say it's uh, uh, on the factoring that we are more exposed. Uh, which, is, uh, which is the impact of IFRS 16 on EBITDA? Um, I think you, you, uh, I don't have the numbers with me uh, right now. So you, in a few days, when we disclose our uh, uh, URD, you, you will have the, you will have the, the impact. Uh, sorry for that. It's, a, it's a, a before ECO acquisition, it was roughly, uh, it was 20 million. And, uh, it comes back uh, to me and now it, it must be in the region of 28. Uh, are there some additional synergies from the ECO acquisition in uh, 2023? Uh, what I would say that, I mean, uh, the synergies has been, you know, achieved so far, but they were offset partially by the one of cost of you know restructuring so next year we will have the uh, we will have the synergies but we wouldn't have the costs this is what i would say and the, the only thing also this year we had only nine months you know uh, three quarters over you know uh, nine months over 12 and next year we will have the full year impact uh, there is a question about uh, the share in the non ferrous metals, which come back, comes from ECO this year, and uh, from which share in, uh, in the revenue. Uh, I would say that most of the 29.7% increase in non ferrous volumes, uh, it is linked to the ECO acquisition. And in the revenue, I would say that the average, average sales price of the um, ECO uh, non ferrous metals is a bit lower than the average sales price of uh, non ferrous metals uh, as a whole. There is a question about the, our, the level of our capex for 2023. Well, we have, I mean, a lot of projects as uh, Pierre Condelier uh, um, mentioned in his presentation, we are going to invest, uh, you know, in a new technology, in niche businesses, and also we have to bring to the code, you know, the level of in uh, uh, capex in in Ecor. So we are planning to have a little bit more than this year, you know, some, I mean, 10 to 20 percent more than this year in uh, what we have achieved this year. And there is a question about uh, if we consider that we will be able to maintain the margin of the multi-service division in the you know, context of uh, inflation in 2023. Uh, yes, it is what we expect, uh, thanks to the efforts of the all the Boris Doris Box team to, to go to the customer and to, to pass an inflation to customer to see on each contract if there is a possibility of doing productivity and uh, also uh, on saving on uh, overheads. It's a mix of that. And uh, 
we, we anticipate that we will be able to do that. We are aware that the inflation rate is very high, you know, around the 6%, but in terms of negotiation, it's easier to pass on a high rate uh, uh, to the customer than to uh, pass on a, a lower rate, okay? However, there is, you know, um, a backlog between, I mean, the negotiation and, you know, the uh, when the, the, the new rate becomes effective. This is the only thing that will be negative. But we are confident that we can pass all the, the increases, you know, to the customer. And there is a question. Uh, what, 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 what explains the rise in the working capital requirements? Uh, indeed, there is no rise. Uh, the rise is 3.5 million, uh, which is very low. And indeed, we are very satisfied with the way that we have uh, managed our working capital requirement. I think uh, maybe you should look uh, at the table. Uh, there is likely a mix of column. Uh, I don't know if there are some. Uh, I think uh, we went through all the questions uh, that were in the chat. Um, I don't know if there are some other questions. Just wait a few seconds. Berman, do you want to, to conclude? Oh, uh, there is another question. Oh, no. I mean, we yes, have mentioned that uh, some, uh, 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 yes, some questions uh, about Elior. Uh, as I, we said before, uh, there is n we, we have no further development to make uh, uh, compared to what we say on uh, November 24th. So please uh, refer to, to that press release. OK, uh, I mean, just uh, for the conclusion, um, uh, for the long term, the group is very confident, you know, in the, the, the recycling uh, industry and he's very confident in his business model. Uh, we are, I mean, sure that uh, for the long term we will achieve even better numbers. Uh, but, you know, right now, as everybody knows, uh, we have uh, the pandemic, uh, inflation, uh, high inflation rates. We have the energy cost that is high. We have the war in Ukraine. There, I mean, recession in certain countries. You know, uh, the market conditions are not good, so maybe there will be an impact, you know, on the, on the level of the numbers, but we are confident that we will get uh, positive numbers. But for the long term, our business model has uh, a very good track record and we have shown all, all we have always shown that we could, you know, manage uh, to make money and to integrate very quickly all the businesses that we have acquired. OK, now our focus will be you know on you know external growth i mean in europe because in france our size is uh, uh, is too 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 big and we are also focusing you know in organic growth on uh, niche businesses what can pr uh, provide us with i mean high ebitda margin and uh, develop that business thank i want you, to everybody. thank you uh, I want to thank you all for taking the time to attend this presentation. And uh, should you have any other questions, don't hesitate you know, by email to send them to us. Thank you very much.